In this lesson, we're going to take a look at time lapses. So they're a great addition to travel travel videos or, you know, you want to stand in the middle of a train station and everybody else is fast moving around you or you just want to get a nice sunset or sunrise. There's a few tricks so that are different from daytime, the sunrise or sunset time lapses. And we're going to jump in and explain them now. You'll need your camera on some sort of tripod or find a way to attach it to something to keep it steady. Also, it's a good idea to make sure that your phone is in airplane mode and any notifications are turned off. So this will stop pop-ups coming up on the screen when you're potentially recording video. The app can be placed in a time-lapse mode. This is an alternate form of frame rate system by which the app will take video images based on seconds per frame rather than frames per second. So time lapses allow you to take a series of pictures over a long period of time. And then they're stitched back together as a finished video or movie. You can capture a sunset or sunrise or a busy city scene. From the frame rate app area, make sure standard is set. You can choose 24, 25 or 30. Set this as your playback speed. Note that the higher frame rate you choose means the longer time will be needed to create the finished time lapse. So in resolution, let's choose 4K and Filmic Extreme to get the highest quality that we can. Now let's set the time interval we want. We have 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 30, 45 seconds and a minute intervals. So which one do we choose? Remember, if you choose a frame rate of 30 frames per second like we did, I need 30 pictures for one second of the finished time lapse. So, if I choose two, that means that the camera will take one picture every two seconds. So to get, say, a 10 second clip that I'll need to do a time lapse, that's 10 seconds times 30 frames per second, that's every one second, that's basically 300 pictures I need. So one picture every two seconds will be 300 times two the seconds equals 600 seconds. So for a 10 second time lapse of around two seconds, I'll need about 10 minutes or 12 minutes. There's also apps you can find online to calculate this out. But actually the best way to do this is to experiment for yourself. And um, a good rule of thumb is take slow moving clouds, for example. The slower your subject is moving, the longer the interval you'll need. Conversely, if the subject is moving fast, like people in the station or city street, you can use a shorter capture interval. A normal standard interval that won't take you too long is around two to four seconds. Let's close the settings menu. Notice that now there's a TL in the menu. This is showing you that it's in time-lapse mode. And the second values are now in red. Next, we need to set up our camera just like we would a normal video capture. However, there are a few little exceptions here. Under normal circumstances in daylight, you can set your shutter value to double your playback frames per second. This will also allow for a nice motion blur. In our case, we have 30 frames per second, so we'll set our shutter to 1 over 60. I can then adjust our ISO as low as we can for the correct exposure. This is where an ND filter might be needed. Then this locks your exposure reticle. We can also set and lock the focus reticle. Next, set and lock our white balance. All you have to do is click on the little WB and it'll turn red. This means that the white balance won't shift if a cloud comes over and it gets slightly darker or slightly lighter. It'll stay fixed for our time lapse. Now we're ready to record. Just press the record button and sit back and watch your time lapse. Basically it will record until you hit stop. So as we said, if I want about a 10 second time lapse, it's going to take about 10 to 12 minutes at two frames per second. Once it's done, your time lapse will be in the media library along with your other videos.
What about sunrise and sunset time lapses? This is where I think we need to tweak the settings. For a sunrise, for example, it'll be dark out when you start, and when the sun comes up, it's bright. If you lock your settings when it's dark, when the sun rises, it'll just show up as a white bright blob in your video. In this case, I would say don't lock your exposure reticle or white balance. Let it change as the sun comes up and goes from dark to light. So it'll allow it to compensate for whatever it sees in the scene. The same is true for sunsets. Another note here is wherever you are in the world, the time it takes for a sunrise or sunset can be long or very quick. If it's quick, then set the interval to a quicker capture. If it's slow and takes a long time to do a sunset or sunrise, you can set it to a longer interval. So some practice is needed here. Don't wait until the last day of your holiday or vacation to try to capture the first perfect sunrise, only to find out that it doesn't come out. You need to practice with this. It can be tricky. And you can't just redo it. You have to wait till the next day to try it again. So practice before. Let's take a look at some different uh, capture rates. Here we can see a daytime time lapse that was captured at two seconds to get some clouds. And the other one, exactly the same scene, was set at 10 seconds. And here's the difference. In this sunrise, we use an interval of two seconds. The exposure and white balance were both just set to uh, normal. They weren't locked at all. And no ND filter was used at all. This is just the camera itself. So as you can see, this was quite light even getting out to start this. But as the sun comes up, it's not getting totally blasted out just with white light. Uh, you can also try using an ND filter. And so as the sun rises and it gets brighter and brighter, it doesn't uh, overexpose it. 